Hello, everybody. Oh, today is such a special day because I have a special guest and I'm very, very excited to talk about a project and some other things. But I have a writer, filmmaker and actor who plays Zach in the new Apple TV Plus series, Little Voice, which new episodes are airing each and every Friday. Uh, episode six airs this Friday. Only three more left into the finale. So you definitely, if you're not watching, you might want to catch up and get on board. It's an amazing series. And I cannot wait to talk with my special guest, Mark Blaine. Mark, how's it going today? Hey, good. How are you? Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. I'm I'm so excited. I um, we, you know, we chatted uh, beforehand. I really do appreciate your love checking out my review. That meant the world to me. The the little voice is such an amazing moving series, and it, there's things I'm gonna talk about um in the, in the interview today. But like with everything that's kind of going on in the world right now, with so much hurt and, and and anger in all direction. It was so refreshing to see uh, a series that was filled with so much love and positivity and just resilience in so many different ways that it, it called to me like no other. Um, being a big fan of music as well and how I feel like music is really therapeutic and kind of see, seeing that in display and just the talent that was at bay and you know the VIPs as, as I'm going to call you all. Uh, just watching that camaraderie reminds me of my childhood, and it was it was it was so well done. I'm I'm so excited to talk to you about this, and you know, thank you so much for being a part of that project. It, it meant the world to me. Yeah, no, it's so great to hear like how much the show has touched you, and I mean, even though I'm a part of it, I also feel I could be in your shoes as well, like from the outside, because I'm watching it for the first time as you know an audience, and it is a really touching show and I'm so honored and proud to be acting amongst the people that are in the show um like the series regulars like um Brittany O'Grady obviously is incredible and um Shalini Bathina and Philip Richardson um yeah I mean I'm just I I play a smaller part but I'm it's like crazy because everyone everyone I think might be a little bit younger than me or close to my age, but mm -hmm. I'm, I was so impressed by everyone on set. And when I watch the series and I see everybody doing their thing, I'm just like, I mean, I knew they were amazing on set, but then seeing it all come together, it's really magical. Yeah, it's, so. it's, it's truly, as it's, fans, anybody listening is, I cannot trust enough. Definitely check this out. There'll be no spoilers talk today. We're, we're, we're going to talk up into episode six. Again, there's three more episodes after that. I'm going to give you just a little bit of sprinkles of things to come in those last three episodes as I've as I seen it all, uh, but still plenty of time to catch up. But before we talk about Little Voice, you know, you, you really do draw yourself in the avenue of success, like being a part of this project and obviously your golden project in Cubby, which is available on all digital platform. Another project I really suggest people to check out you know, like when I when I when I did my research on you putting that <laughs> film together, I was like, this he I was like, he's a madman. 16 millimeter, <laughs> and then you having an issue with the Kodak film for your first film. Your first film, no shorts. Yeah. And you you you're swinging for the fences and it came together beautifully. I think that speaks a lot about you. You know, if you if you feel it in your heart, then go for it. And Thus, the results and it and it and it truly proves. So, you know, congratulations on that. But like, what were you thinking? What were you <laughs> thinking? So, first of all, <laughs> thank you so much for looking up Cubby and knowing all of that. Like, I mean, that's awesome. Thank you. Did you, did you watch the film? Yes. Yeah. Like, thank, I'm so grateful. I mean, yeah, the movie took me seven ish yeah. years to mm -hmm. make. And yeah, it's an absurd story. I love that you like know the ups and downs by like looking at <laughs> my online like social presence. But yeah, I mean, I wanted to make a movie and like I wasn't being cast in anything um, because I was being told I was too strange or like I wasn't, I wasn't the sidekick and I wasn't a leading man that could be like the romantic w whatever. And I was like, well, what am I then? And I'm like, oh, well, I'm, I'm me. So I wrote something that was sort of an elevated, more ridiculous version of myself. Yep. <laughs> um, and, and I made this movie, which, I mean, it's about a babysitter who um, has anxiety um, and he's really uncomfortable with himself and his sexuality, but um, he's also got some trauma in his background. 
but then he meets a kid that he babysits who's like his best friend and who accepts him fully and doesn't judge him and makes him laugh. And they're, it's such a healing relationship. Um, and then outside of that, there's a bunch of bonkers um, characters that are very absurd. And it, I mean, it kind of, it's based on like when I first moved to Brooklyn mm -hmm. and felt like I was in some kind of alternate universe because I'm from Indiana originally, which is pretty awful. Way different dynamic, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, where are you from? I'm from Washington, D.C., but... Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 I would die to be from D.C. Like, I mean, <laughs> Indiana is like, so, I mean, luckily Chicago was like an hour and a half yeah. by train. So I would take it, the train as a kid and like try to go see theater or just to get away. Like I, I wanted to be a human and I didn't feel like I was a, a worthwhile person in Indiana, which was, I mean, like where I grew up was homophobic, mm -hmm. super racist. Um, men were misogynistic. Everyone mm -hmm. loves guns. Um, yeah, but anyways, Cubby is like um, a piece of my heart. And like the reason I got a little voice is because I got is because of Cubby. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, if you watch if you watch Cubby, you can truly see some parallels and why. <laughs> if somebody seen that project, like, oh, there's some way somehow we have to use Mark. We have yeah. to, you know. And if and if it wasn't you yourself, Mark the character had to be used in some way or form. And it, and it just makes sense, like. Like you said, and then the idea of coming to New York, it being in New York, uh, I think there's a character that actually channels a little bit of Mark in it and and, and draws maybe really some personal parallels to your life as well. We'll, we'll definitely talk about it in a second. Yeah. Really quickly, too, by stalking your social media, two <laughs> things I have to address. Number one, your fashion choice. I will be needing uh, your air dress if it's not creepy because I have to come shopping <laughs> in your closet. It's a thing. It just has to happen. Like, I, I, I need all of the shirts. <laughs> That's so nice. That's really nice to hear that. Just because, like, you get into a stage where you think, like, you're looking at the same. I have been looking at some. I'm looking at my closet, by the way, like, directly yeah. over yeah. here. <laughs> and it's, it's exposed. Like, there's no anything. But, um... Yeah, you look at the same things over years and years, and I have trouble throwing away certain shirts because they have sentimental meaning. But yeah, I think I'm really good at finding uh, gems. Like I'm good at finding like a beautiful coat in like yeah. a Salvation Army that like should not be there. Um, yeah. So yeah, no, no, I can also like my boyfriend. I think is the one can also be a person that should be taking credit for my shirts now because. <laughs> I'm stealing some of his wardrobe as of lately. <laughs> this, this is mine. This is mine. But okay. I'm going to say some um, details over. I need some consulting. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And then obviously number two, I mean, so many people I know, my friends, we have this conversation all the time and we probably could knock out an extra 30 minutes on this, but we'll keep this one short. You're, you're a burger connoisseur. So what's your favorite burger joint? Oh my God, I love burgers. Also, Kevin Valdez, who plays Louie, loves burgers. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, he's been awesome. in a lot of his interviews. Like, oh. well, not a lot, but I'm, I'm yeah. or maybe I'm just remembering like how much we talked about burgers on set. <laughs> um, I think he liked five napkin burger. He's okay. amazing. I, my favorite burger, I used to love Five Guys mm -hmm. just because they're, it's unruly how it's out of control that they allow you to get as many toppings as you want with no yeah. extra cost. <laughs> so like you can get like the sauteed mushrooms. And I don't know. It just it's out of control. But like, if I go there, I get everything. And then Shake Shack, honestly, like I know it's, I don't want to, I don't oh. want to name big chains, but these they're good. Cause when you want something delicious and greasy, like it's there. Yeah, uh, Shake Shack is is my easy go to, but I think Fat Burger is my number one. I get so much like. See, I think I had Fat Burger once in like Long Island. Yeah, like, are they in New York? They were. Uh, they were oh, here and they moved, so I, I wouldn't be surprised they was in New York. But they're definitely all over the West Coast. Mm -hmm. So that's probably the other lures. Like I can't get it as often. So yeah. whenever I get it, I get. It. But yeah, we did have one um, a, not too far out in uh, in Maryland that it just disappeared. I was upset, but anytime I'm in, I'm on the West Coast, I'm looking. But then I'm over there. I'm like, 
you know, just so many other chains I should try and have too. But you know, a burger life, I can I can live off these things. I love it. Okay, so in high school in Indiana, where everything sucked, um, I feel like the end of the day of school was just like I was so exhausted. Also, like, remember when we had to get up at like six in the morning to go to school? <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, I remember like at two twenty, I'd be like, I'm starving. I would like go to Burger King on the way home from like driving home. Yeah. And I would get like three double cheeseburgers <laughs> <laughs> with like just ketchup and cheese. That was my thing. <sighs> and I would eat them all in the car. <laughs> I love burgers. I still do. I do. I think I know what I'm going to do after this. <laughs> now, <laughs> I usually would kind of ask this at the end of a the, um, of an interview, but I, I, I think I'm going to throw this in now because I think it just kind of flows. Um, next projects that you're solely working on. I, I, I know if you said that, you know, you had some ideas and things flowing, uh, especially with the quarantine happening right now. Uh, there's a lot of time on people's hands to really get creative. But uh, could you give us a little hint of what is to come that uh, a, a project that you're uh, working on? Yeah, I mean, Little, little Voice was really... Um... I don't know, like a godsend in a way, because I had made my own film and did everything. Like I directed it, I wrote it, I produced it. Um, I went and went into a lot of debt for it. Um, <laughs> and then Little Voice happened and it was super healing. Like I, I was being taken care of by amazing filmmakers and TV producers. And I was also amongst other actors that were like a family and I didn't have to take care of everyone. Like I was so used to being the person who was yeah. like, being like, how are we gonna raise money to like finish this thing? But then but then for Little Voice, I just like, like got to go in, do my job, have so much fun and be sad when it was over. Yeah. Um, and so Little Voice was a really nice break. And even like most of quarantine, I have to say like, I've taken a lot of time just to like sit back and process whatever the last eight years of my life have been, which is primarily like working my ass off, having a million jobs and trying to finish a movie and then and then making a TV show. So uh, weirdly before the pandemic in January, my sister who's also an actress and a writer, um, Carly Blaine, uh, we produced a short film together and we shot it in two days and um, it's with Tamara Tooney. Do you know who Tamara Tooney is? No. She plays. Uh, she plays the lead actress. You would definitely know, like, because you watch TV. Like, she's yeah. in um, Better Call Saul. She's in. She's really famous because of Law and Order SVU. Oh, oh. Um, she oh, played Doctor yes. Melinda Warner, yes, yes. I think. Yeah. And that and she's just in so much TV. She's um, uh, she's originally from Pittsburgh or outside of Pittsburgh. And she's also like a Broadway singer. Um, she does soul and jazz. Like she's anyway. She's just this incredible. Like I, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say older. Like you know she's older than thirty. She's older than me. But she's like an incredible actress who's been around and been in the business forever. Yeah. She was in the movie Flight with uh, Denzel Washington. Yeah. Um, anyway, she's just so cool. So we got her, and it's a a dark, very um, kind of mysterious film about a woman whose son got killed in a bicycle accident. Mm. And my character um, walks into a diner one night and runs into the mother, played by Tamara Tooney, and I tell her that I saw it happen. Mm. And she has no idea. Um, there's been a lot of police cover up with what exactly happened, and we sit down and talk about what I saw and um, it's there's a big twist, and it's um, it's really I'm really proud of it. I'm also like I I wanted to write something that was different than Cubby, which is very outrageous and funny and um, and sweet. And then this short, which is called Ghost Bike, is a mysterious thriller of sorts. And also, I mean, I don't I didn't mean for it to be timed out even though this year has been a lot of you know with everything that's happened like mm -hmm. there is a lot going on with how my character is a gentrifier in Brooklyn and he's talking to this mother who has been there forever 
and of course her son died way too soon and it wasn't because of of violence it was because but it was because he has a black body and that he was not cared about as much in society and um and there's you know a lot of implications of what's going on and really i'm just i'm happy that i was able to make it there was some executive producers who had read the script and they picked it up and said let's make it so we made it in january and now it's being finished we're doing color and an original score um but i never thought that i was going to shoot something right before everything shut down yeah it's pretty yeah. crazy 2020 i tell you yeah, it took me a minute yeah. who, who you're talking about. Yeah. Um, also, she was recently in, um, what's the show I used to watch? Uh, 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 I can't even think of the name of it. Not oh, Almost Family? No, it's the one with the, the um, well, I cannot think of the name of it. It's the show. Bad. It was the show on NBC that she was in. Also, she was in Snake Eyes back in the day, too. Oh, my God. Yeah. 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 No, she's been in everything. So she's also in, I'm like, I'm like singing her praises because emergence. That's I was the name like of the show. Starstruck when we were working with her because I was like, "Oh my god, she's so good!" Like yeah. everything <laughs> she's doing is just yeah. like, she's a real actress. But um, she's in this show called Black Earth Rising, mm -hmm. which is with mm -hmm. Michaela Cole yeah. from I May Destroy You, and that's on Netflix now. But um, it's like Michaela Cole, Tamara Tooney, and John Goodman, and um, yeah. I don't know. Everything she does is amazing. And yeah. she's also a great singer. And, um, but yeah, I'm really proud of what I wrote. I mean, it's definitely like I made it. I wonder if like I had written it after everything happened this year, like starting with George Floyd, I wonder if my writing would have changed or maybe I wouldn't have done it. I just, I kind of fearlessly went forward on it because I wanted, I wanted this to tell the story of this mother. Yeah. And and weirdly, it's kind of based on some reality. Yeah. Not completely, but like in Brooklyn a couple of years ago, I did witness a, an accident, a bicycle accident. And the, the it was like so mysterious. Like the news said that the cyclist was going the wrong way on a one-way street, even though they weren't. And like everything was so mm. just like, sorry for my language, but it was all fucked up. Like yeah. it was like, why are they lying about this? it was a young woman who died. Why are they lying to make it her fault? Mm. And that really disturbed me. And I, I looked at the bike, you know how they paint bikes white yeah, after someone yeah. passed away? I passed it every day. And I had been writing this since five or six years ago. And um, anyways, the story is again, like not about, it's not based on me. It's b based on just a, a person I made up that lives in the neighborhood who sees it. But um, it's really about this mother sort of grilling um, this young man in a diner yeah. for like 20 minutes and trying to get to the bottom of what he knows. And uh, it's really, I'm really excited. I'm proud of it. Yep. And that's Ghost Bike. And yes, yeah, yeah. so it's a short, directed and written by you. Uh, you and your sister are producers and Tamara Tooney's in it and Mike Dole. So I'm gonna have to check that out for sure. And I, I love I anything. Your link, yeah anything with the true inspiration and i think it's fair criticism to say what your vision have been you know different after the george floyd thing because that was so pivotal in everything in society everybody i would i would hope have you know really put things into perspective to a better you know a better psychology or mental about everything around them but your story is your story what is based on your experience, I mean, that's that's you, no matter how it's going to be. So, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely, definitely going to check that out. Thank you. Um, yeah. And I'm, I mean, I'm proud in that, like, we centered a, a Black woman as the lead role. And, and honestly, like, I've never, I don't think of myself as a perfect writer. On set, Mike Doyle and Tamara were, like, giving me ideas the entire time, especially Tamara, yeah. like, constantly yeah. being like, what if we did this? And it's like, for me as a, a new filmmaker, like I love that because like we said, tomorrow has been in the business forever. Like I'm not going to sit there and pretend like I know more. Than yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm all about like respecting elders and also yeah. like looking to, especially people of color and women to like learn from because personally, like I don't think I've learned that much from men in the industry just because it's such 
just like there's toxic men in sports and business and everything, like the same thing exists in show business. And it's hard to find that person who can be a mentor who's not, you know. Yeah, I, I mean, I, even not being in the business, I've heard enough. And yeah. it, <laughs> society, society, no matter what the profession is, you know, um, yeah. the, the toxic masculinity culture and well, again, another 30 minute conversation. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's a good segue, too, because my first question talking about Little Voice was, you know, could you talk about getting the role, working with Apple and then, you know, working with so many great names, Sarah Perales, J.J. Abrams and, 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 and the, all of the cast and being able to soak in so much knowledge on set from all this experience that's just floating yeah. around. Like, I could, tell me about the experience with that. Yeah, I was pinching myself the entire time. Cause I was like, <laughs> I was like, this isn't, is this real? Like I would, I'd get, you know, called for a day of work um, or a couple of days of work. And the night before I could not ever fall asleep. I'd be looking at the script. Like, I can't believe this is my life. Like, I can't believe I've been waiting for this since I was, 12 in Indiana and being, you know, being made fun of mercilessly, like by awful kids and thinking I was never going to get out. And then all of a sudden, like fast forward and I'm like, I get to like go work on a TV show tomorrow. Like it was crazy. I mean, getting up and going there and like, you know, get, going to my dressing room. I mean, it's just so magical. But um, the way that I got it was super, super exciting. I had just finished, it was around this time last year that I had premiered my film Cubby in Los Angeles. And someone saw it there and called up the casting director of Little Voice and said, hey, I know you're looking for like these three or four parts of men um, who are on the spectrum or you know have neurodiverse conditions. And I there's this actor and he's, I don't know, he just, basically sold me and I didn't know that person at all. And I didn't know this was happening. So then I get a mysterious email being like, will you, you know, audition for this thing? I have not auditioned for anything in like eight years. <laughs> like I've just been a filmmaker. I've been, I've also like been a barista. I've been a million things while I finished my movie and was editing it and trying to raise money for it. And so I was like, okay, I'll do an audition. And I think the fact that I was rust, not rusty, but like inexperienced made me really excited and hopeful. I was not like turned off by it. I was like, oh, cool, a videotape audition. And now like I'm in quarantine and the last thing I wanna do is act in front of a, my iPhone alone. It's, it's so boring. <laughs> but I did a video audition. It, um, I sent it, my sister was my like reading partner. Like she read as Bess. And it was like, I just thought, okay, I did really great. I'm happy that I even got an audition. Like, it felt like this was so cool no matter what. Then an hour after I send it, I get a call to actually go in person like the following week. And I'm like, okay. So I prepare and I'm, I'm memorizing all these lines for different characters. And I go in and it's Sarah Bareilles, Jesse Nelson, uh, Bernie Telsey, who's the casting director, and Ben Stevenson, who is a producer who did Westworld mm -hmm. and, you know, works with J.J. Abrams on everything. And I just, like, walked in the room and was, like, in <laughs> shock. But so happy. I was so happy. I was, like, really living, like, that sort of dream moment. Like, it didn't matter if I got it because I walked in and, like, you... Okay, I have to say, like, most of the business, I think, is about being a nice person and, like, doing your homework and, like, you just, like, knowing about Cubby, even the fact that you watched it. Like, I went on some news, that's a whole <laughs> story, but it's, like, I've been on, like, news programs, like, li like big, big things, and they're, like, so, and, like, then I afterwards, I find out they didn't even watch my movie or they know nothing about me or, like, or, like, they mess up my name. It's, like, but anyways, I go in and like to have Sarah Bareilles and Jesse Nelson and Ben Stevenson and all these people asking me questions about myself and talking about my movie and saying they read about it. It's like that is the best feeling ever. And not because it's about getting attention. It's about the fact that like people are seeing you, 
You know, you don't yeah. have to prove yourself. They already knew. I had already proved myself a little bit, I guess, through my video. And that's why they wanted to see more of me. But they were just so kind. And, like, I I just felt so taken care of and safe. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jesse Nelson, who's the director, I mean, everyone keeps on noting that she wrote um, Waitress and worked with Sarah Bareilles in Waitress the Musical. But Jesse Nelson is, like, indie film royalty. Like, She's been around for a long time. Like her first movie is called Karina Karina. It's with Whoopi Goldberg and Ray Liotta. And it's a beautiful indie film. Like, I don't know, people just need to start talking about how the fact that she wrote Stepmom. Like she's written some amazing things, but I'm just like a super fan of her. Yeah. She's like mom to me. And um, yeah, so I, I, and then honestly I waited like a week and then I found that I got the part. Wow. And, and then I, I was actually flying to Ireland to do the Irish premiere of Cubby when I found out I got the part. Wow. And then I had to fly back early to go get into wardrobe uh -huh. for Little Voice. And that was just surreal. I was like, this is, this is a once in a lifetime thing. Like the story is happening and everything sort of like, it happened for the reason. It was like right place, right time. But yeah. because I suffered for Cubby for like seven years trying to make my own film and just like messing up and like, but making something I loved and like not settling and really fighting for my art artistic um, integrity and expression for Cubby. I feel like, I feel like it paid off in the fact yeah. that someone saw it and was like, I'm gonna like put this guy's name in the hat for an Apple TV show. And honestly, the rest is like history. Like it's like, I, I we shot the whole season last fall. Um, being on set with Sarah was magical. Um, also working with Brittany O'Grady. I, I actually, like, I don't know why age matters, but it's just so that sort of this thing as you get older, like I'm 31, like I keep on thinking everyone's my age, but like- I'm sure <laughs> Same, I'm 33, like, I'm right with right? you like, on that. Like, <laughs> we're like still 22, right? We're not. Yeah. But Brittany is like younger than me. Like she's in her mid twenties and maybe younger, I don't know, but she's, it doesn't matter. What I'm saying is, I don't think I have that kind of heart or that kind of like groundedness when I was that age. And she just walked onto set and like talks to everyone, says hello, like she's a professional, but she's also a really amazing human being. And that's why people love her. Like, and she's also like, if you're following her on social media, like, She's just like giving voice to so many people who are underrepresented, including trans women of color. And yeah, Brittany's just, she's a class act and like acting with her was so cool. And then seeing the show come together, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> because like everything she does is just, I love her. I love her character. The character is great. And I didn't get to see everything obviously filmed because I'm not in everything. So I've been so surprised every week by new episodes and and then the other person I should talk about is Kevin Valdez, who yeah. plays Louie. And, like, he's... I learned so much from him. Like, he's also, like, a prof he's 21 years old. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, like, he has the most dialogue in the show. And I, remember, <laughs> I remember days where, like, I had one line. One line. Mm -hmm. And I was, like... And that's not a bad thing. Like, yeah. I was so happy and, like... That's one line. Not, you have more than one line. Like the the fact is like my character is really fleshed out for being I'm a recurring role, but like yeah. I live with Louie, um, yeah. with other people who are um neurodiverse and um but anyways I had this one line and like I just kept on screwing it up and like anyways I had like I was so embarrassed, but like what I'm saying is that Kevin is just like he had so much to do and kept so calm. And I remember feeling relief being on set, just going like, this is a time to learn and acknowledge that yes, this is hard because there's like 150 people watching you with lights and everything. And when I was making my indie film, I directed and I co-directed with someone else and it was much smaller. Like, yeah, there was 30 people in a small room with lights and it was hot, but I wrote the script and I, it was my money that was on the line. There was like high stakes and like something, um, something allowed me to like zero in, but then you put me in an Apple show and I'm like, what is going 
on. <laughs> like, you know, it's like this JJ Abrams on the call sheet. Like, is this real? Am I really doing it? But um, but no, I got over that kind of stuff. I think there's like a learning curve, really, like yeah. to be, and we all got really comfortable with each other. And then I I don't know by episode nine, the finale, which we filmed at the very end, I was like just devastated. I was finally feeling my groove. Like I was getting to interact with other characters because, um, you know, not a spoiler alert, but by the end of the season, the boys from the group home, we, we do get out a little bit more and, and meet other people. And yeah, I just was so, I was just living my dream, but uh, yeah, Apple is so cool. I mean, I think it's an amazing platform because of just like the choices they like the people they've picked to like tell yeah. the stories of like it's not over inundated with too much content so like if you get it you're not going to get lost yeah. like you very specifically know what there is for you and yeah. um and yeah like i don't know i unsaid i just this the filming was so cool because we were in new york i'm yeah. in new york i'm in brooklyn yeah. we filmed in brooklyn i miss the New York that we're seeing a little voice. That's not the New York I have right now. Oh, New yeah, York I have right yeah, now is right, very dumbed down and like yeah. inside. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely a shout out to uh, Sam, Andrew, and obviously Kevin, the VIPs, the four of you all just create yeah. magic together. I mean, you talk about uh, one line, you have some magical one liners, I'll say, that I'll be using for sure. Like I had links of surgery. That's the only complicated procedure. <laughs> I I channel so much was that because I have that super nonchalant personality that gets me <laughs> in so much trouble because it's so honest, but it's like, yeah, with no expression, that's just what it is, you know. Y'all call yeah. it the authority on the sixth floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I love, I love Zach. I mean, he's so sweet. Like, there's definitely, there's a little boy that I found online who um, was in a, a news story, I think. Um, and he was on the spectrum and he was obsessed with vacuum cleaners. And um, he just was like fixing everyone's vacuum cleaners in his neighborhood. And it was like so sweet. He like would tell people to bring them over and... Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I love the character and I love Andrew and Sam who play, Andrew plays Ted, Sam plays Phil. Like, it is such a fun premise that we're living in this home together. Like, I, I don't know, like there's, there's a lot of camaraderie and we, we built that while filming. And, um, and like I said, Kevin's just such a joy to be around. And I mean, he definitely knows musical theater. Like I'm a musical theater nerd because I grew up doing theater. Yeah, that's all I wanted to know. That's awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> um, but like, it was so fun to like hear him spout out these facts. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh my God, I know. Like, I'd be like, I remember that. Like, I love just everything he knows about musical theater. <laughs> I... And you guys are so organic. This, this, it's just so much chemistry because, like, even in um, one of your recent um, Instagram photos, all of you all are together on set. I cannot tell if that's in character or out of character because it's so. <laughs> flat. It really, I, I really was like, is this like a take or something? Like, I, I couldn't tell. It was, it was really, really cool. Um, another thing I kind of want to talk about on set. So, again, you talked about uh, being from Indiana, a place that's clearly not acceptive of the LGBT community or POC, just a, a really shitty area in, in, in some places, you know, um, definitely by your testimony and other people I've known as well. Uh, they're moving to New York, which is, you know, as you said before, New York has its challenges as well, uh, still happen to be kind of guarded. Uh, at nights. And yeah, New York, I've definitely had my experiences in New York. So as, as much as people praise New York uh, for um, being really diverse, and, and it's true, I mean, it is still very dangerous for, uh, you know, people of the LGBT community and pe people of color. I definitely, like I said, had my experience in broad daylight and stuff like that. Yeah, I really, really do love how this series showed and cast it with equality, diversion, and inclusion, and on full display, which I think is so important because it was, it, it, nonetheless, it's a society that we all want to embrace, you know, where it's just 
love love is love and it's not really you know like has labels or any tension in it it's just it's just it just it just all flowed together i really love how that was on display i episode uh, episode five is it episode five let me make sure yeah episode five is like the pure epitome of happiness i know oh my god it's so good <laughs> but like what did it mean to you once you you know were able to after being starstruck as i as, as you said but once you were able to really see what was all coming on around you and it's your city so you mm -hmm. got to see your city being displayed in its true fashion like how, how was that you know like like what was going on through your head like wow like this is yeah. this is this is the epitome of new york city here yeah i think um going back to what you said about like the diversity and representation that's obviously just like everyone's really pushing for that in many story in storytelling and i think i took it for granted at first i just like walked into that set and i was like wow i'm amongst like a very like talented diverse group of people and like having Brittany as the lead character with her brother and then also her father played by Chuck Cooper, like having them be the center of the show. Like, I don't know, I was really touched. I was like, I'm, I'm so lucky to be a part of this. Like that, and, and then also Prisha, like the roommate, like there's just, it's really important. And yeah, I, I, I think I didn't notice till later. I mean, it all makes sense because like, if you ever watch Sarah Bareilles' interview or read Jesse Nelson or listen to her talk about the making of it, you can tell that their their artistry comes from their heart, and like I think they're they do they do really good at listening and um, bringing in the right voices and the right minds and to tell these stories and um, and they're both New Yorker or like they love New York. Um, I know Sarah lives in New York. I, I think like the show makes so much sense. Like when I watch it, I'm like, oh my God, yeah, this is the New York that I miss so much. And I think there's like some people who are like, oh, it's too clean and it's too this. And it's it's like, I will take a too clean New York any day on camera. <laughs> like that is not, I'm not worried about that. Like I also, for it being too clean, even when things are too clean, like in real life, I still sit down thinking this is so dirty. Like I'm gonna sit down <laughs> in the concrete, but like, but like you just get used to it. And like yeah. the subway's always been dirty, but like yeah. even when it's clean, you're like, is it dirty? I don't exactly. know. Exactly. I I don't know. Like the New York displayed is very real. I mean, you, you see buskers and singers and performers every day. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like I went into the city. For like the second time in six months, like from Brooklyn, I went into Manhattan the other day, and I was like, remember, I was falling in love with New York again, even though it was sad, even though like most people were masked and nothing was open. I was in the financial district, which is not cute at all. It's like so emotionless, <laughs> but I still was like, oh, I love it here. Like I love, I love the city, even though I'm paying way too much to live here right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not working and I don't yeah. know what's next and the world's falling apart. But um, yeah. yeah, no, the show is, the show does a great job of making New York its own character. And, and you brought up Preacher too, which I, you know, I talked about with uh, Cubby how, you know, from your own personal testimonies um, and her character, like, how did you feel upon seeing that character's art? And I, I, you, you have completed the series so far, right? Or all the way? Yeah, right? yeah. I watched the whole. Okay. Series. I found yeah. the whole series. So let me see. So I can make sure I get to a good point. So right now, obviously, Prisha is uh, still really struggling with being comfortable with herself, uh, and she's expressing concern of being from a different world. And I thought that was such a powerful thing because I know a lot of people want to kind of channel that to her nationality. And I don't really think that that's what she means. I think she's just saying that she's coming from, you know, a generation where a lot of people struggle to be themselves because it's not accepted, even though people love you, but do they love you? Because, you know, once you make this, this decision to be open and, uh, and, 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 and the expression of sexuality in a way that, you know, there's always a chance of, well, what are people going to think next? Even, and a lot of people have, you know, have talked about their parents' abandonment and so forth. And, that. and I and I think 
you know, that's what I was drawn to when I seen that. But like when I think about uh again, um uh, her her character art is so special and it's so moving. And this is, you know, the the scene when she was uh hit with the bottle, I I was I was done. I that was my break time. I was like, I'm done in the middle of the episode because yeah. that hatred is so real. Yeah. And it and it and it and it's nice as she's been and as lovable of a character, you know, those are the people who are targeted. Yeah. So yeah, but yeah, I, what I, was your thoughts I, looking at her character? I love her character. I love Prisha and I love Shalini, the actress who plays her is so great. And then her love interest, um, Ananya, played by Nadia Mohiban, she's also just they're so lovable. I I mean, I was really touched by their story and by uh, Prisha and her family's story. And the thing is, I don't, that's not my background, but like, I resonate more with that, like coming out as gay in Indiana as a 14 year old, I feel more in common with Prisha than I do with like the gay white male characters that I see in like famous movies like love simon like that's yeah. not my story like that and 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 Prisha's story does feel like my not my story but you know like i that representation is really important seeing a yeah. woman of color go through that and it's also not it's not overwritten it's just so i think it's really thoughtful and simple and and yeah the the hate crime that happens in that episode it's really disturbing and i think i talked to someone who was just like that doesn't happen in new york and i'm like are you kidding me <laughs> things happen in new york all the time there are crazy i mean there are trumpers in new york there are homophobes in new york like this happens just like you were saying like it's like if someone would say like oh yeah no racist things don't happen in new york city it's like yes they do in broad daylight they happen and still people like have called me FAG, like, where, like, I could be anywhere. I could be in, like, a gay neighborhood getting out of a bar, and, like, it's, I don't know if it's going to be safe to get into a cab, because what if the cab, you know, it's just, it's obviously, it's not, not all oppressions are the same, but I just, I think that we like to say that we've come so far, which is what everyone's been saying with race this year, is to say, actually, we haven't come so far, like, look at our history. Like it's only a second ago that things were happening and they're still happening right now. Um, anyways, I just went off on a whole thing, but, no, you're absolutely uh, right. you're but yeah, absolutely I, right. I really love Prisha and I really love her story. And, um, and it's just great to have that kind of representation. I think that like Prisha and Ananya, like them being in a mariachi band, like there's oh. so many beautiful visuals and it's just super, super unique yeah and 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 you know yeah uh, to kind of go back on your comments this is kind of one of the blessings of 2020 because it has brought to a lot of people's attention of the whole idea of we've come so far but it's more like but have we but really have we because it's on display and always not just love the youth um that's really not taking no for an answer right now and on yeah. all platforms it's, it's a it's a really beautiful thing. I think it speaks a lot to like Britney's Britney's personality as well. You know, our our generation, should we say, or our group set, uh, you know, we probably didn't have as much courage because, you know, it, we we people have tried and attempts and really no success, and a lot of us gave up and couldn't find hope. But this generation behind us is yeah. like, there's no such thing as no for us, and I, I it's so beautiful, and it, the the, the future is safe. You know, if, as long as they're taking charge. Yeah, um, yeah. People got to come off this whole like this stuff doesn't happen. They also oh, what well, people are just pulling these stories like you know <laughs> out of their butt. Like is this what's happening yeah. nowadays? Like I, I I don't get it. But yeah, yeah I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I'm pretty just character and and like you said, it's not overwritten because it comes off so organic and natural. I I really really loved it. Um, so talking about episode six here, which is going to be episode, uh, premiering this Friday. Now, again, won't, won't be no spoilers, but I will say this. One of my favorite, favorite performances with the song Simple and True. Oh, my God. Yes. Oh, my God. Quick, Thank you, Apple, for allowing me to screen these uh, episodes and review them early. I am absolutely upset that projects such as this 
I have to wait until the soundtrack is released because I will be 100% honest. Like I said in my review, I'm hitting Shazam like, oh, this song has to be available. And then, you know what's funny? I Shazam it and it's Shazam. And then they look at the number and it's like 800 more Shazams before me. I'm like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> so other people are like wanting it too. We're exactly. all like dying to get it. Yeah. I got to screen it as well. And I was looking for the song immediately. Like, when I was done finishing it, like it's, it's beautiful. This, the music is, I was telling my boyfriend, I was like, I'm so happy that I have this music for the rest of my life to listen yeah. to as a memory of the show. Like, obviously I could watch the show whenever I want, but like the music is something that's just, it takes me into the show immediately. And, and yeah, every time these songs are so, I just can't believe that in the time we filmed the show, Britney also went into a recording studio and recorded this with Sarah. Like, it sounds, it's just so good. I mean, they're, everyone's just super talented and they work really hard. So it's, it makes sense. Yeah, we, we this, this episode sits, we do get um, some really deep moments with Louis um, and Bess. Uh, the performance by Bess, like I said, it's an overall, it's an overall emotional episode, but Britney really takes our performance to the next level. Uh, the soundtrack is just so amazing. It just keeps getting better and better the deeper we get into the season. Um, and then, as I like to call you all, and people won't understand why I call you all the VIPs. The VIPs are set to a little festive event that doesn't quite go the way they want to go. And uh, much like my personality, Zach is not for it. <laughs> and I'll just, I'll just, I'll just quote it. And it is what it is, but uh, hold on, let me try to say it exactly how I would say it. I think he said that you really, you really dropped the ball on this. Huh? I thought I, I thought I had it right quoted exactly, but anyway, Zach definitely wasn't for it, uh, and he uh, he must like I said myself, just like I'm not for this, and it is what it is. I don't give up too much, but that that episode six is going to be. A really good five was great. Six is even greater. It gets better and better. Now, I uh, mean, you talked. People, you got to watch these last three episodes, especially the finale. <laughs> you know what yeah. it means? It's a, it's a, uh, it's, it's 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 really good. It's the ending that's really good. I will say this because there's enough from the previous episodes to know. Uh, the Hamilton release on Disney Plus is so timey. With what's happening, yeah. yes. and you, if all you Hamilton and theater lovers, you're going to love what's to come. It's going to be. I would never amazing. have known or could have predicted that I'd be somehow connected to <laughs> Hamilton in the year 2020. It's really bizarre, but I'm so happy and proud. It's just yeah, the Hamilton thing, and that's all. I'll, I'll call it the Hamilton thing. It's really exciting and really fun. Again, that was another thing, like, without giving too much away, I got to, like, work with, you know, some really cool people and and learn something that I didn't ever think I would perform on a TV show. So, so yeah. Now, two quick little fast questions, and then we'll be in out of here for today. Now, number one, is it safe to say that you love Hamilton over weather, weather patterns? Say that again? Safe to say that you choose Hamilton over weather weather patterns. Oh gosh. Um <laughs> Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. Uh and have you ever put together uh a vacuum cleaner? Have you ever taken apart one or 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 done any type of mechanical work on a vacuum cleaner? I definitely looked up vacuum cleaners before we started shooting because or I mean like Maybe it was once we started shooting because I was like, once the prop guy handed me one, I was like, um, <laughs> what? And they're like, here's a screwdriver. You can just undo this, undo this. So I was undoing a lot of things on set, but I had to remember because we had to reset and make sure I put it back together. Um, but I looked up a lot of stuff at home. I mean, no, I mean, I don't know that much about vacuum cleaners. I did um, have a funny photo shoot a couple weeks Sorry, ago. That's awesome. Yeah, where I like, yeah. I took a, and the thing is I, I went in a lift with the vacuum cleaner on the way to the photo shoot, but on my way home afterwards, I was in no rush. So I like, 
I think I walked like 30 minutes across Brooklyn with a vacuum cleaner. And I, was, <laughs> I was like, this is good, like, research. Like, it was like my accessory. It was like a purse. But instead of a purse, I have a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> like, walking down the street. Um, but it, I kind of hated vacuum cleaning as a kid. Did you oh, have to we, do that at home? Did your yes, mom? all of us did. Yeah. <laughs> Well, actually, I don't think so. I feel like kids now don't have to vacuum clean. Of course, gotta get the sweepers and all these other cool things, and yeah. these uh, the ones that kind of do the vacuum. Yeah, yeah. Like it was. It wasn't as bad as mowing the lawn. Yeah, but it was. It was bad. That mowing the lawn <laughs> might be my my, my biggest uh uh-uh uh as an adult. Like I too much of that as a as youth. No 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 no. I I, I will say I outgrown that. <laughs> I will wash dishes. Yes. I will do almost everything else. The grass is my uh uh-uh. uh. Um, and then the last thing. Now, again, to be very strict to the question here, do you pay? Okay. Are you a person that you would say you pay very close attention to detail, such as? Assessing your crowd capacity. This is, so this is like these are Easter eggs for like for viewers who watch the entire series and then come back and watch this again. Um, I love that like my character picks out details. Um, the 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 specific the specific question you just asked, like actually, in in terms of now. I'm always counting how many, how many people are in a room wherever I go because I mean, going places is so insane is it, right now. Like grocery shopping, I just went to a restaurant for the first time eerie. in months, and we <laughs> like we sat outside, but it was there was so much like we were analyzing like how many people there were, and like we found out they were taking people's temperature before they went to the bathroom inside. Yeah which I loved. I was yeah. like, yes, I love this. Like, it's super safe. Um, but yeah, there's so much in that character that it's so much like me. Like, I do take a lot of things literally. And I also, <laughs> like, really dissect things. Um, yeah. And yeah, what a joy. Like, those, the writing is great. I'm so lucky. Like, Megan Kennedy is one of the writers. And obviously, Jesse. Nelson wrote a lot of the episodes I'm in. They're both just so funny. And I don't know. I, I love being on a show that's kind of like run by women. Yeah. Like everyone is, everyone's a badass and like yeah. knows what they're doing and is the best of the best in their field. And then the fact that Bad Robot is in on this is just like the cherry on top. Like, yeah. Because I watched Lost when I was a kid, when I was in high school, in middle school, I was obsessed with Lost. So this just feels like I'm in Lost. I feel like I'm, yeah. I'm trapped <laughs> on an island, and I'm like, is this really happening? I'm, I'm part of something that's with these cool people. Yeah, <laughs> so also, well, again, people, little voice exclusively on Apple TV Plus. Episode six will be premiering this Friday. Three more episodes to the finale. You definitely want to check it out. It is so good. And I I, I, I don't want to jump the gun, but I just have to say the ending of the season is so magical. Uh, it's truly a perfect fitting ending for season one because I'm throwing it out there because I'm hoping that season two comes out. It's so it's it, it has to. This has just been such an amazing project. And speaking with Mark Bland today, who's just an amazing person who plays Zach uh on the on the show it's just again it's, zach is my spirit animal none of that it's, it's crazy it's crazy and and, and and you know what i really really do appreciate with this is that um you know for working in, in, in press and media when you you ask hey, hey are there interviews available typically they say you know they, they throw their top people out and which is fine but like when a character draws to you so much you're just like well I don't want to be like picky or anything, but like, is it it's possible I could like talk to that person? Like, I, I know you didn't name them, but like that person, like, you know. <laughs> so this was just so it was so good. I'm I'm so thankful again for you uh, checking out. For, thank you for doing what you do, and I'm um, really proud to be on your show. And um, your Wait. room is really cool. And, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, no, no, I'm I'm really grateful. I'm glad that I'm glad that you were able to take the time out. Um, to talk to me. This is a really joyful experience. 
Thank you so, so much. So, yes, definitely check out Little Voice. And then definitely go rent Cubby, available on all digital platforms. So your YouTubes, your... Um, uh, it's free everything. on Amazon Prime. And yeah. yeah, it's free on Amazon Prime if you have a... Uh, there you go. And then Ghost Bike, which were, is a short, and, and you, is it a, it's not available yet. No, not yet. Okay, yeah. so stay definitely t- stay tuned for that. It's a crazy time, you know, with the feel, the um, festival world and everything just yeah. being on timeout. Um, I just couldn't imagine how many more movies I probably would have consumed if things were normal. But it's yeah. still a great time, folks, uh, to check out so many projects that are released and some that uh, you know had to kind of rework their schedule that are now just being released. It's it's really uh, a, a really special time, but. You know, Mark, he, he, he'll he tell you in each and every time you'll talk to him or in his interviews, you know, being an independent filmmaker is a really hard thing to do. It really makes you bro- broke easily. It hurts the <laughs> pocket. It hurts the banks. So yes. definitely when you get a chance, definitely check out uh, some projects, support your indie, your indie films. And, you know, Apple TV Plus is doing an amazing thing on their streaming service. And Little Voice has just been something so magical. If you need really a, um, a upbeat, feel good series. Um, that's just really a pure display of happiness is the easy way I can put it with amazing music, musical performances, uh, uh, so much inclusion, diversity on set. Uh, and then, you know, if you're much like me, seeing uh, four guys uh, kind of the, the camaraderie between all of them and them being so overly like dynamically <laughs> different, but all really appreciative of each other, just like my childhood, you'll absolutely love it. This is this is an easy binge for you all, but each and every week on Friday, definitely got to check it out. Mark Blank, thank you so much again. Uh, we have to catch up. I mean, yeah, let's it, would up be, it would be criminal. Yeah, we didn't talk after the after the conclusion, so yeah. uh, we have to set that up. So, But well, I appreciate you so much you. for having me. Yes. Oh, and, yeah, and by the way, definitely make sure that uh, you send me over some clothes that you may not want anymore. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, I, I, a lot of the things I feel like might fit you, actually. <laughs> oh man, world, please open back up so we can I can get to New York or we can hang out, like, yeah. <laughs> or the film festival world, so we can get back to our norm. You know, we all, we all, we're we're, like, we're missing that so bad. But thank you, everybody who watched this interview, um, and stay tuned. Much more good content coming your way soon.